I came into this race extremely confident that I could take the win. However, one fatal mistake caused me to lose this race, and I'm going to be sharing my tips on how you can avoid making this same mistake that I did. Let's dive into the video. Hello Zwifters and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be looking at one of my own races where I raced in race number one of the Zwift Academy races. And this is on two laps of the Rolling Highland course, but since there is a bit of a lead in, it is around 15 miles long. Coming into this race, I knew that I had an extremely high chance of taking the win so long as I played my cards right and really executed the finish right. And that's because the finish tackled a small incline and I typically do very well on the hills because I am a much lighter rider at around 46 kilograms in weight as a junior and um, I knew that I had a solid sprint and I was going to be chilling for most of the race because um, most of these riders were going pretty easy other than these small surges like one of the ones you're seeing right now. However, for the most part, I was in a comfortable place for most of the race, and I had a lot of energy conserved, ready for that finishing sprint. However, there were actually two riders up the road, and I knew that this could either be a place where everyone comes back together, or where everything comes apart, and this is where we like really lose that breakaway, and we end up losing the race ultimately. So I knew that this was an extremely important part of the race. So I tried to push on and I tried to encourage other riders to take poles on the front and really keep this going so that we had some good speed on the front so that we could really close that gap between the riders because the gap was only 11 seconds at the time. So I knew that we could certainly close it if we just really took advantage of the fact that we are a large group and there are only two riders. So I knew that we definitely had a chance of closing this gap. But as we get closer and closer to the finish, it became to become... It it became a bit less likely that we were going to catch those riders because riders stopped taking poles on the front and the pressure really uh, slowed and a lot of riders really just started chilling like we were for the most of the race. Now the finish of this race is actually very technical and I kind of like this about the Rolling Highlands course is that for the most part it's pretty chill but there is a really steep castle climb where it's maybe like 20 or 30 seconds where you're climbing at around 7 or 8 percent and that's where a lot of riders surge and that's just about a mile out from the finish so once you reach the top you got a nice half mile of descent and then you start that final climb to the finish and that final climb starts out pretty slow but then riders really ramp it up towards the end and i knew that towards the end a lot of riders start to fade so that's where i can really pick riders off if i'm having a good day and my legs are feeling strong in that sprint now we're actually approaching that castle part pretty soon, so I'm going to be pointing out where the major move is made to really end the race for everyone. You can see right now that I'm in a decently comfortable position. I'm holding around threshold power and my heart rate is increasing ever so slightly, but I'm not really too worried about that because I know that I can sit back and draft um, in this group because I knew that the pressure wasn't going to be that high as the riders in this race weren't necessarily at the top level like some of the races that I've been doing recently. Now you can see here heart rate's up to 195 and you can see that we're just going through some small rollers and that's kind of what Rolling Highlands is. The name kind of says it all, it's just some small series of rollers at around 2-3%, to some small descents at around 2 to negative 2-3% to negative and overall it's just nothing really major that was going to cause a split. So the riders kind of just roll across it like it's no big deal and I kind of like that about the course because it just keeps things chill other than that finishing mile or so. Now as we get closer to the last banner before the finish, you can see that some riders start to use their featherweight power up and I don't know if that's necessarily a great idea because featherweights are going to help you so much in that finishing stretch because the speeds aren't necessarily going to be high enough for the draft boost to make a massive difference. So the, the featherweight boost is probably going to be the best because it gives you that extra burst of watts per kilo and that's really what's going to propel you up that climb because watts per kilo are pretty much everything on climbs in Zwift. Also, if you are enjoying this video, please smash that subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 1,200 subscribers by the end of the year. And if you could please help me out on that journey, that would be greatly appreciated. Now, let's continue on with the video. You can see here that I just used my draft boost, and that's because I want to use it when we're going towards the downhill and still get that extra power up. So I do execute that pretty much perfectly. Now, at this point in the race, we are about two miles out from that finish. 
And something that I would highly recommend doing is really just thinking about what you're going to do in the finishing sprint. And that's what I like to do. I like to just really calm my power down, use as little power as possible so I can just get my heart rate down and get geared up for that finishing sprint. And that really allows me to just think about things mentally and just think, where am I planning on starting my sprint? Where do I think I can make the most efficiency out of my little sprint that I do have? And I'm really just planning things out at this point. You can see my power drops to around 70 watts. And that's just me using all the draft possible and i don't want to be one of those guys pushing three watts per kilo on the front because that's extremely inefficient and it's not going to get me the most prepared as possible for that finishing sprint and i know that since i have a chance to win this race i really want to have the best strategy possible coming into this finish now my plan was to really just attack on that um brick climb that i talked about that goes up the castle and the reason why i wanted to do that was to try to cause some sort of split um in the group and really just string the riders out so that everyone's frantic in that finish so that i can really just give it whatever i have on the line and see what i can pull off because i know that i'm not going to win this race now at, because two riders are up ahead they have like 30 seconds on us and that's not coming back at this point they're already way too far ahead we need to chase probably around five minutes ago at this point and we didn't end up chasing hard enough to actually catch them you can see here, you can see this climb in the distance. It doesn't look too steep from afar, but it does get much steeper once you really just go through that little underpass that you're going to see me go through. And I just ramp up my power right here. You see another rider was like me who decided to slingshot himself through this group, and I just go flying through the group. And I'm able to catch up to the first place rider in our little group really pretty much instantly. And I just go right past them. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to hammer on here, see what I can do. I hit 530 watts. That would have been amazing if I had that for the finishing sprint but you're gonna see me make my really major mistake really really soon you see your riders start to catch up and i just put in a small surge so i can stay with them and be sort of in that top five or so not much separation caused by that but i'm feeling fine at this point i know that it was a stupid move by on my part i could have saved a lot of energy for the sprint but it was still kind of fun to really just cause some little bit of separation and get everyone a little bit more excited for that finishing sprint 0.9 miles out and this is where i'm gonna you're gonna see me make my big mistake now keep a close look at where i am in the group right now relative to where i'm gonna be later on you can see that i'm just slowly drifting back there's literally only one more rider next to me and i'm almost off the back of this group but i'm just keeping my power nice and low and i really just don't see this separation coming i'm really not aware of what's coming um in this part because riders i don't know one rider starts to surge and really just make a separation and i wasn't expecting that at this point in the race and i continue to just chill and just think about like okay there's nothing going on here i'm perfectly fine and i'm having to put in a pretty big surge you can see my heart rate starts increasing pretty rapidly and i'm chasing now at around 170 watts and that's not how i want to be gearing up for this sprint i want to be around 100 150 watts max when i'm coming into that sprint you can see the power only keeps going up i'm doing around 240 watts 230 watts and i'm just like okay this is pretty much over now i'm just gonna go for it from here thinking that everyone is gonna start sprinting at this point on but this just shows that i didn't really know the course extremely well i didn't know it well enough to see where i should be timing my sprint you can see that i immediately lay out the power to around 90 watts now this is still a, such a big mistake because you see here everyone's just swarming me at this point so i restart my sprint and then i hit around 530 watts which i'm really happy with and i'm able to hold around 440 for like five to six seconds but after that i really am i just stop accelerating and my legs are just completely burnt from chasing and putting in that small attack earlier and i'm just holding on for dear life at this point i'm thinking okay maybe i can pick off these two riders in front of me but my legs just completely give out you can see here i'm only doing around 330 340 and i'm just like okay it's over at this point and one more rider almost gets me at the line and that's kind of scary to think about because i I was just so dead at that point. Now, in order to prevent this in the future, I really should have just been closer to the group and more towards the middle, especially since this was such an important part of the race. And I really need to be like towards the middle. So I would have been more aware of the attack that was coming. So I would actually be able to see the riders in the rider list rather than just seeing them just ride right away and just being completely left in the dust. And that's pretty much all I have for you guys in terms of the analysis portion of what I should have done differently in this race. I hope you learned I hope you learned something from this video, and if you did, please smash that subscribe button. With that, see you all next time, and ride on.